Hi everyone and thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Julia and what I'm going to show you today is how to isolate exosomes by using um, the exome isolation kit from Cell Guidance System which is Exospin. Um, so basically uh, this kit combines two really powerful methods which is precipitation and then size exclusion chromatography um, and we will uh, ship all that you need in this kind of boxes uh, well you will find our exospin buffer which is needed for the precipitation step um, as well as our um, size exclusion chromatography columns waste tubes that you will need during the um, uh, size exclusion step and we also provide pbs so we provide pbs minus minus to be sure that um, the pbs that you will use will not interfere with any of your downstream application um, something else really important is the user guide that you will find when we will ship the exospin kits. So it's a really valuable uh, document with a lot of information about exome isolation in general and more importantly about our kits. So please read it really carefully before using our columns. So today what I'm going to show you is the step on page 6. So if you have the user guide in front of you, you can follow, up, follow with me. And uh, if not, you can also download it on our website. Um, so I'm just going to show you the purification of exosome steps, so not the precipitation, uh, because it's a bit longer. Um, so basically, the precipitation step, you just add um, your buffer with your sample together, you mix it, and then you put it in the fridge uh, at 4 degrees from 1 hour to 12 hours. And then you put it out, and you will see that you have a pellet, and this will be your uh, exosome. Um, and then you put out the supernatant, you resuspend your pellet in 100 microliter of PBS, and then um, this sample, so it contains uh, exosome, but as well as protein, etc. Um, so this is why we have the size exclusion chromatography step that will allow to purify your sample of all, th all other components that are not exosomes, basically. So as I said, I'm going to show you today how to use our columns, so this is how they look like. Um, the first step in the protocol is to calibrate the column. So to do so, uh, you first have to put out the plug and then to open the screw cap. Uh, because there is a preservative buffer inside of the column, it will start to uh, elute directly when you're going to pull out the plug. So this is why um, we provide waste tube. So when I'm going to open the plug, open the cap, and then I will put my column inside of it. Uh, so now I'm going to start by putting out the plug then opening the cap and putting it straight away into the waste tube. So you will see that on the top of the column there is the buffer remaining. So the first step is to pipette it out. Um, so when you do it, uh, do not hesitate to touch the top of the column. Um, it's not going to damage the column at all and it's better to put all the buffer out than uh, be afraid of touching it and then having contamination with your sample. And now, so um, the column should not dry. So to do so, you have to go straight away to the next step, which is to add 250 microliter of PBS, which is here. So this is the PBS that it's um, given as well in the kit. So you put it on the top of the column um, and you, you centrifuge for 10 seconds. So it's a really low speed, it's 50 G. Uh, so you don't have to put the cap uh, on the column. You just you can just centrifuge it like that. And it's 10, se um, 10 seconds centrifugation. Um, so you will see in the user guide uh, that we mentioned that you can centrifuge five more seconds if there is PBS remaining on the top of the column. So you will see, you just um, need to have a look and you see if there is PBS. So for me, uh, everything is clean. Um, so I don't need to centrifuge for five more seconds. And then um, just in order to be sure that uh, all the column is clean of any ethanol, um, we ask you and we recommend to repeat this step. So you do the same step again and then you centrifuge for 10 seconds and 
and so at the, at the end of um, the second centrifugation, you will see that your waste tube is full, it's full of BBS and of buffer. Um, so the first thing to do is to discard the flow through and then put back your column in. Uh, now your column is completely calibrated and is ready to receive your sample, which is the 100 microliter um, of the precipitation from the, the other step. Uh, so me today, I'm not going to use sample because I didn't do the precipitation step before, um, but I'm using Tripan, which is a blue dye. Um, it's a really good method to show you the size exclusion chromatography method, basically. Um, so I'm going to use it as it is a sample. So I'm adding 100 microliter of this uh, blue dye on the top of the column. As if it was my sample. And then this time you centrifuge for one minute. So now it's been one minute. And what you see uh, at the end of this first centrifugation, um, when you look at the column, is that the dye went inside of the column. However, it still um, stay at the top. Um, so our power resin size is 30 nanometers, so everything that is smaller or equal to this side will have to go through all these pores, and so it will be much longer for them, uh, for the protein and for the small molecules, to go through the whole column to, and to actually elute. However, the exosome, because they are a bit uh, larger than uh, 30 nanometer, they will go through the column much faster than all the protein, etc. So uh, this is all your protein that gets stuck. This is the remaining of PBS that was in your column. And then, uh, then we just have uh, the last centrifugation. So it's one minute again. And at the end of the last centrifugation, you will have your purified exosomes. So at this stage, what I do is that I bin um, the waste tube and then I put my column in a 1.5 milliliter of micro centrifuge tube in order to receive my purified exosomes. And before putting it, the column again, I just add 200 microliter of PBS on the top of the column one last time. And I centrifuge again for one minute. Okay, so now it's been one minute and what you see at the end of your final centrifugation is that here there are your 200 microliter of purified exosomes which are ready for any downstream application uh, as well as uh, to freeze if you don't have time to do it straight away. And regarding the column, so what you see is that the dye continue to elute uh, through the column, however it still uh, gets stuck uh, quite uh, a lot on the top still. Um, and this is what allows you to have a really pure sample at the end of this step. Um, so the column will be stuck with all protein, all small molecules, and here you will have highly pure exosomes. Um, so I think it's the end of uh, this video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I, thought, um, I hope it was informative and that um, you will be happy to try. Um, so as I was saying, it's a really easy uh, protocol and um, I'm also always happy to support you if you have any questions before or after trying our columns. So thank you again and do not hesitate to uh, put a comment and uh, tell us your feedback and what you think.